This is a taco that's actually Kentucky proud. Every bite. Right now on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs, bourbon-inspired food with a world full of flavors. Bourbon is a, is a great ingredient in so many things. I'm Tim Laird with Kevin Harnett. And we are in Kitchen Studio with the chef from OBC Kitchen in Lexington. It's a restaurant known for its selection of fine spirits and top shelf food. And today, the chef will take our taste buds from Mexico to Italy with plenty of southern accents along the way. And Kevin, I'm making a trip to the bar, shaking up the old-fashioned Manhattan with some new twists. That and more right now on Secrets of Bluegrass Chef. Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is a presentation of Kentucky Proud. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us again on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs, and it's a great day to be in Kitchen Studio. It sure is, Tim, because we have a special guest. Matt Combs is here from OBC Kitchen in Lexington. OBC is named after Old Bourbon County, the mark that distillers stamped on their whiskey barrels before floating them down the Mississippi from Kentucky. Nowadays, OBC is not only the mark of fine whiskey, but also a mark of fine food. We'll sample some of the restaurant's signature dishes coming up, including short rib tacos and gnocchi bolognese. How good does that look? Kevin, I'm getting ready to get cooking, so let's bring him on, Chef Matt Combs. Hello, Chef. How are you doing? Thanks, Good to brother. see you. Matt, great to have you. Great, great to be here. Thank you. First of all, tell us about OBC Kitchen. Well, OBC opened up, uh, we're on about our fourth year now uh, in Lexington, Kentucky. We're off Tate Creek Road. So um, the original thought was we really need to showcase and celebrate all this bourbon that we have here in our state that's coveted. So we kind of started with the bar and then we said, you know what, the food has got to match. So, you know, we developed a menu and I think everything complements really well with the bourbon. It's great on its own. You know, if you just want to have some sweet tea and some short ribs and we can do that too. So. And we've just seen that boom take over and not only been the bourbon boom but the culinary boom behind it just like you Oh mentioned. absolutely I mean there's tons and tons of bourbon cookbooks and from barbecue sauce to you know cakes or, or whatever bourbon is a is a great ingredient in so many things. And I'll tell you what you've got so many great appetizers are you still doing the bacon? Uh... We still do the bacon in the glass I think. <laughs> oh, uh... great. A whole glass comes with this beautiful bacon. Is it maple glazed? Or we, do, we do a thick cut candy bacon where we do a oh. bourbon honey glaze on top with oh, unrefined sugar. We had that. It was so good. Yeah, I think if we got rid of bacon, they may burn my restaurant. Down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they meaning us. Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> oh, but anyway, everything's good at OBC Kitchen. But anyway, what are we going to start with today, Chef? Uh, we're going to do our one of our more popular appetizers. It's a short rib taco. So. Mm. Uh, you don't really think about tacos and bourbon going together, so what we have done is we've, we've kind of put together this not as south of a border taco, so there's some things like kale and jicama together. You know, we're doing a, a short rib, so we're doing actually a, a bone-out short rib. Uh, mm. We're going to braise that, so we've nice. got shredded meat. It's sweet. It's braised in cola, so... Let's All get right. started. All right. Well, first and foremost, we're going to start with the short rib because we know it's going to take the longest. Uh, we use, we blend our salt and pepper, um, it's a proprietary blend, so what we do is uh, just liberally season because what's going to happen when we sear this off, a lot of that's going to come off and we really just want the caramelization. What's so proprietary about it? What's it's, it, what? it's, 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 it's our blend. Uh, oh, it's, so a, it's, it's the a, ratio. It's a secret. Is there something else in there besides salt and pepper? Just salt and pepper. Okay. It's, but it's, it's more it's, crafted. It's right. more about the ratio, and the key to it is we grind the salt and pepper together. Oh, oh so you did share the there secret. There is something. Ah. There you go. Very nice. So once we get it liberally seasoned, we're going to start the pan with olive oil. We've already got it on, so it's nice and hot. You might want to step back. It oh, kind of yeah, pops. Oh, yeah, here we go. This is going to be right. Nice, nice sizzle. So, so we get a nice sizzle. Um, and it doesn't take long to sear the sides. This would be a pretty quick process. Yeah, this would be a quick process. Tell us how you got started uh, in the kitchen. Uh, I was actually going to UK, uh, going to be an engineer. I, all aptitude tests coming from East Kentucky said, you're great in math and science, we're going to make an engineer. I got a job at a restaurant part time while I was going to school. I'm like, you know what? Engineers out the door. I love this. I love it. But so, there's a lot of math and science to cook. There, you, know, so you know, you there can incorporate is. You know, your engineering skills. I do engineer plates, you know, and, and there is an art to it too, which I do enjoy. So 
so we got this hot pan so we can get the fond off. And that's where a lot of that flavor is right in yeah, there. Yeah, so if you see the brown on the pan, that's where that's where you've really started to develop your flavors. That's good stuff. So we're gonna do whole cloves of garlic and onions. Just kind of roughly chopped onions. Just roughly chopped because it's it's just gonna be a, a aromatic. It's just a flavor component. Because at the end of the day, we're gonna get rid of all that and save the liquid. We'll reduce that liquid oh. down, and that jus is what's gonna help flavor the finished products as well. So the other ingredients that we have that we're going to add to this, we have our soda or pop, uh, also soy sauce and a little balsamic vinegar. Okay. Uh, all th you know the soy sauce is the umami that's going to add the that other element of flavor. The balsamic is a little acidic, so it's going to help kind of break the meat down and give that little bit of bite. Oh yeah. So from there, now that we just sweat those. There's our balsamic. Wow, you can smell that yeah. too. Oh, and one thing about balsamic, when it cooks down, it becomes really nice and sweet. Really Just sweet, yeah. Beautiful. So we have the sweetness from the balsamic and the sweetness from the soda as well. So, or pop, or pop, or actually, you can call it soda pop. <laughs> <laughs> you can get you can get both of those. That's in there. the safe bet. I right? we just always called it Coke. But it's not Coke. They're not a sponsor, <laughs> Kevin. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For the right price, we'll call it Coke. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so now that I have all the ingredients in, what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to put it right back in the pan. Mm. Uh, when we do it at the restaurant, you know, we're doing full hotel yeah. pans at a time. We're going to cover this, throw it in the oven, set a timer, and get after the other stuff. What's the oven go to again? 350. 350 yep. for three hours. For three hours. Excellent. Right. We're going to do that during the commercial break, so we'll wrap it up, pop it the oven, and We'll have a little magic TV when we come back. You're watching Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs with Matt Combs from OBC Kitchen in Lexington. Stay with us. Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is a presentation of Kentucky Proud. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Kevin Harnett, Tim Laird with Matt Combs from OBC Kitchen over in Lexington. Well, it didn't take long for that to cook, did it? Three hours, and <laughs> here it is, all done. And now we're going to make a little uh, sauce for this. So we're going to start with a salsa verde, uh, which is a green salsa. One thing that we do at the restaurant that's just a little bit different, uh, we want it really creamy. So we add avocado to it. So when we mix Ooh. it up, it's this nice, smooth, creamy salsa that just finishes Almost on like top. like a spread. It's like a spread, yeah. So oh. it's kind of like a guacamole and salsa verde yeah. kind of got, got together so right. share the secrets so this is a pretty simple recipe the most of the leg is going to come in using an immersion blender or you can use just a regular blender at home any kind of food processor will work well so i have jalapenos and i'm just giving a rough chop because i'm going to blend all this stuff up i have some poblanos and one thing you can do with your poblanos and really all these things if you want to have a smokier flavor you can add a little char to it so you can put it on the grill mm. Um, really just on your burner you could do it just as long as you get some fire to it and blister the skin. Now these are tomatillos that and this is what really kind of makes the salsa verde and they kind of look like tomatoes but they have little lanterns on the outside. So we'll go ahead and peel these. Hmm. Tomatillos. Just quartering those because you know you're going to blend yep, it all, everything, everything together. Yeah this is not a lot of magic in this, this is just easy. So we're just going to do a small batch for this since we're squeezing a lime in there. The, the lime gives the acidity, helps kind of keep the, the avocado from turning. We're also going to do just a little bit of salt. And one trick that we do use, instead of just lime juice, we add an acidity with a little bit of vinegar. Oh. So we just do a little bit of vinegar, not to make it sour, just oh. to give it a little preservative method. And then the avocado. The avocado, avocate. Which that, again, that gives it that kind of creaminess, as you said, that texture, which is beautiful. So what I'll do, because we want it to, we want people to know that there's avocado in there, so I'll take half of it and leave it in a dice. Oh. That way, that way it has a little texture. So it has a little texture in it. A little noise now. We'll finish this with a little chopped cilantro as well. Oh, okay. You got one of those I do. I love that. Immersion. Oh, yeah. 
which you can get at the Dine Company, by the way, if you yeah. don't have one. I love it. I use it every day. This Almost is, every day. This is actually for my house. So is, I use it all the time. <laughs> Tim's never prepared food with his, but he... <laughs> Margaritas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the blender. I didn't know you use a blender for food items. I go, what? <laughs> Pina coladas, margaritas. <laughs> I didn't know you can use it for food. So one thing that you'll see there, oh, as you yeah. can see, it's like super, super creamy now for it a salsa doesn't verde. It take a second either. Yeah. Now we're going to build. So what we're looking to do, base of our kale and jicama slaw. So you get a bite of everything. A little right. bit of the slaw. There. Uh, so this is the oh, this is the apart. this Jeez, is the superstar of the dish. It's the meat of the dish, so to speak. <laughs> kind of so you can see that it just shreds apart. It yeah. So we're just going to shred it Gosh, apart. And that smells good too. I just Everything want, I can smell. I just want to grab each component. <laughs> it looks so good. So together, it's going to even be right. better. And now we're now we're just going to dress it up. We're okay. going to make it look pretty. So uh, because it is beef, we make a nice instead of a crema, we're doing a horseradish crema. Oh, just because, nice touch. Just because uh, uh, red meat and, and horseradish go so well together. We're going to go with the salsa verde that we just, we just made. A little dollop right on top. Wow. Beautiful. This is packed with flavor. I know. I'm just, each each I mean, layer gets another flavor. How are you going to fold that tortilla up, Tim? I, how are you going to eat that? Oh, I can get in there. <laughs> and then just a house-made pico de gallo is the last step to finish it off. Wow. It's beautiful. That, a taco. That, oh my God. that really does take an engineer. I love that. And what do you call that on your menu? This is our Colibri short rib taco. Excellent. How about that? Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. I, I, I want to dive in. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And we're not finished sharing the secret. You got a little pasta coming up? We got a uh, gnocchi bolognese on the way. Yeah. Look forward to seeing and hearing the secrets to that. And Tim, you're sharing some too. I'll tell you what, I, I've got a uh, old-fashioned Manhattan with a twist. You're going to love this. Mm, look forward to seeing those. It's more secrets revealed on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs when we come back. Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is a presentation of Kentucky Proud. Hi again, glad to be with you on another edition of Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. This time we're cooking with Chef Matt Combs today from OBC Kitchen in Lexington. We got the secrets to his short rib tacos. They look fantastic. And coming up, a Kentucky take on an Italian classic bolognese. But first, it's time to check in with my broadcast partner Tim Laird. He's back at the bar with a new twist on a Kentucky classic. Maybe it's time to shake up your Manhattan. I've got a great idea and a couple of tips for you at home. First of all, stay with your regular bourbon. I love Woodford Reserve is a great Manhattan bourbon because it's so well balanced. But why not change up your vermouth and bitters? That's what I like to do. Instead of the standard uh, vermouths, maybe look for some Noe Pratt, uh, a little French vermouth. Antica, which is a beautiful vermouth, or a Dolan sweet vermouth. They all taste different. You can taste them, but change it up. Also, change up your bitters. Why not? Uh, there's so many great bitters on the market today, whether it be the classics from Angostura or the Woodford Reserve uh, expressions, uh, like the Spiced Cherry. I love that. So change up your Manhattans. Have fun with it. Try different sweet vermouths and try different uh, bitters, and you're going to have a great cocktail. Don't forget, always use a wonderful, great spiced cherry as your garnish. So there it is, the Manhattan shaken up. Cheers. Oh, love it, Tim. Thanks. That really does put a new twist on that Kentucky classic. And we have a lot more to come. Up next, it's back into the kitchen with Chef Matt Combs from OBC Kitchen in Lexington. Don't go away. We're coming right back on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is a presentation of Kentucky Proud. Hi everybody and welcome back to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. We hope you're enjoying the show. We're having a lot of fun with Matt Combs from OBC Kitchen over in Lexington. We say the best for last. This is going to be incredible. It's a gnocchi bolognese, right? That's it. Where yeah. do we go, Chef? Where do we start with? 
Uh, we're, we use a three meat bolognese, so we're going to start oh. with uh, an Italian pork sausage, and then we use Blackhawk Farms uh, here in Kentucky. We use their, their ground beef, and we also use a ground lamb as well. So you have three meats, and it's pretty traditional bolognese, except with a little bit of a southern accent. We use a lot of um, local products. We, you know, Blackhawk Farms, we use Lexington pasta for our gnocchi, uh, and then Brian Turner and Happy Sprouts Farms, we use those. That they have great microgreens and, and great great products there. We, so We have so many great farmers we around, do. and we are so Kentucky proud, have been for since the existence of the show, and yeah, it's good to see you using it. And it always means a lot, but when you know the farmers and where you've sourced your uh, goods Absolutely. from, too, that's a, that's a nice it's relationship. A, it's a great relationship to know that the guy that's actually producing the thing comes into the restaurant, delivers a product and says, hey, it's good to see you, you know, because you know that it's quality, you know he's taking care of you. Right. Excellent. So, so the three we begin with a hot pan. Yep, so we're going to start with a cast iron. We're going to throw a little olive oil down to lubricate. We're just going to kind of smash that up as each meat goes into the pan. And again, this is another one of those slow and low kind of dishes. It's going to take us two hours to simmer this sauce. So, of course, uh, we have a little bit pre-prepared. So that was, you can see the nice red on the oh, Black the Blackhawk Farms mm -hmm. meat. And then we're going to go in with the lamb. I'll tell you what, Kentucky has some of the best lamb anyway. So in the bolognese, we have the mirepoix. We're going to do our seasoning, so it's going to be dried basil, uh, dried oregano, a little crushed red pepper to give a little bit of spice, uh, and then the tomatoes, cabernet, a little red mm -hmm. wine, and just simmer that down for, you know, the longer it goes, the more flavor you're going to develop. So we take it for about an hour, hour and a half. Wow. I love okay. the bolognese. I know. It makes a whole difference. So the key to this dish, we're going to do um, fresh pasta. So Lexington pasta makes a great gnocchi for us. Uh, the biggest key to it is make sure and season your water with salt. If you don't put the salt in now, you're never going to get that salt in the pasta. And then just add the pasta. And once it once it's in there, you're talking about maybe a two minute cook time. Yeah. Like it's really super fast. I mean, because that's fresh, so it doesn't take long at all. Once you see it start to float, you know you're you're there. All right. So we've heated the sauce as well. Uh, a lot of times in the restaurant, we'll use the pasta water as well to kind of help enrich our sauces. Well, it also will thicken it up a little bit because some of the starch is in sure. that water. That, mm. And look how nice. I mean, just little pillows. <laughs> this, yeah. Yeah. My this, pillow. It's, this is my pillow, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Made right here in my home state. I knew you would. <laughs> so from Kentucky. Here, so from here, we're just going to go ahead and plate it up in our bolognese oh. bowl. Gosh, that's good. It's a nice hearty dish too. I love that. Oh uh, yeah, it's great for uh, the colder months, but you know, it's still it's good for the warm months oh, too. Thinking anytime I can I, I pasta year round. So we're going to do a, a fresh uh, parmesan reggiano that we've just grated over the top. I saw that you brought in the big block and just gave it a just little grating. Sh yeah, shave it. We're going to do some of uh, the great microgreens. The Happy Sprouts people. Folks at Happy Sprouts Farm. And then we'll serve it at the restaurant with just a little oh. handmade garlic toast. That's it. That's a meal. That, that looks great. That. Well, we appreciate you sharing some of the secrets today with us. We wouldn't be able to be here without all of our sponsors. The Dine Company is one of them. They want to send you home with a nice cutting board, a little gift certificate there, and some uh, nice awesome. sharpening equipment. Awesome. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. We appreciate Thanks, that. Thanks, Great job, buddy. Appreciate it. We hope you all have enjoyed it, have you? Make some noise if you like the show. We hope you enjoyed watching it at home. If you'd like to be a part of our audience, it's easy to do. Log on to mintjuliptours.com. For Tim Laird, I'm Kevin Harnett. We'll see you next time on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Yeah.